Kind of hard to push, huh? Can I do the gold? Yeah, Valerie, do one. Welcome back to Army Dot Buzz. Let's go to the video. Welcome to the glamorous side of hooking up your RV. So, in our bus, we have this is kind of like our hookup bay. Um, obviously, this is our black tank line, and this is our gray tank down there. So, one of the first things you want to do is when you pull up to a site, you kind of need to know like where your hookups are in relation to their hookups, because um, you don't want to be, you know, I have a 50 foot. Uh, 50 foot hose, 50 foot cable, and we got 25 feet of sewer. But you don't want to use all 25 feet if you don't have to. So, um, the first thing you do is figure out where your sewer is. Now, we've kind of noticed that there's two different types of sewers. Most campgrounds are going to have this, uh, this screw in type, right? Because it keeps your, it keeps your poopy line secured down in there so it doesn't come out so first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to take your adapter here and you're gonna want to put it in and this doesn't need to be like super tight just give it a couple turns right like you don't need to crank this thing down you definitely don't want it stuck that's that's the big thing um, then our guy here, he's got like kind of different orientations that he can hook on. You want to make sure that it's secure on there and sealed and all that good stuff. And just so that when he's tight, he's like pointed towards where it's going to be hooked up, right? Like if he's pointing the opposite way, then we can take him off and orientate him a different way. And then the next thing you do, is you get your actual poopy hose. So what we do is we connect them together. This keeps your smells from escaping, right? All your stink is in here. And so keep these guys locked together. And then you unhook them. This is referred to as the bayonet style. And then you want to make sure that one of them is at least clear because when you clear your tanks you want to see what's coming out of the tank so get yourself a clear fitting that guy's not clear you can't see your poopy coming out of there get yourself a clear one so that you can see we're gonna put this on to here and you want to make sure that all your bayonets are connected right like if it's all crooked then your poopy is gonna go out onto the ground that's not good so we're going to hook up our hose, make sure it's nice and straight. Um, we don't have one of those little, well we did have one of those little like things that keeps it off the ground, etc. That kind of makes a little ramp. But I've kind of noticed that like it's really not necessary. Um, so yeah, we're hooked up sewer line. So at this point, we can pull our tank. You don't really need to zoom in on the nasties, just <laughs> they're there, trust me. Um, so when we drive around, you don't want to drive around, you don't want, we kind of found out that you don't want this tank to be empty, right? Being empty is bad. You want some liquid in there and that way when somebody goes number two, you don't create what's called the poop pyramid, right? Like it comes down, you want it to go into water and dissipate. You don't want it to hit the bottom of the tank and you'll slowly create this build up and over time when that's dry it cakes on there and it gets exponentially harder and harder to get off of there and then they refer to that as the poop pyramid that's when you get some really really nasty smells so before we left our last campsite I throw about five gallons in there and we throw a pod and that way when we're driving around in there five gallons of water and that pod is sloshing around in that tank kind of cleaning it so when we get here I'll pull because we've kind of been using it and then you never want to leave this guy open because stinkies from the sewer can come back up through your tank and then every time you open your toilet that's that your tanks gonna be loaded with all that stinky because it's gonna go to the highest point and then that's gonna come right up through your toilet every time you flush that's gross um, so there's that side of it um, 
Our gray tank is has nothing in it right now because we haven't taken a shower or ran the sink or anything in there. Um, but even still, like where our where our drain is, we kind of have about an inch of stuff down in there. So when I take off from each um, from, Campsite? from each campground, I'll throw some water in there, and I'll also throw. Um, like at Home Depot, they sell this stuff by Zep. It's a degreaser. Because your tank, your gray tank has, I mean, it's kind of gross, but like being sweaty and food and oils and, and butter and stuff like that, you kind of get this like fatty buildup on the sides of your tank. So throw like a half cup or so of some degreaser in there. And that way when you're driving around and it's sloshing around, it's it's scrubbing the inside of your tank, breaking down those fatty nastiness. And that way when you drain, it all comes out it's nice and clean. Next thing is, is your, your clean water. So what I like to do is connect them together. This is what you're drinking. This is what you're showering with. You don't want nasties in here. You don't want it to accidentally be contaminated by your sewer line. You don't want dirt in there and clog up some you know, faucet, etc., or clog up your filter. Um, so I connect them together. Then when I get here, I undo them. I hook up this end through the bottom. This connects to our freshwater inlet. So this, this is not final yet. This is just, hey, it works. So that's our freshwater hookup. And the very first thing that it sees is the pressure regulator, right? Because some RV parks um, will have upwards of 100 PSI of pressure, whereas normal residential is gonna be about 55 to 60. So the first thing you want on there is that pressure regulator, drop the pressure down. That way you're not blowing hoses out of your RV or bus conversion or whatever you got. Ooh, owie. So the next thing is we run this over to the water hose. Hook that guy up. This guy's kind of weird because he's like pointed up at the sky. Not really sure why. So there's that. Get a nice tight seal. Again, you don't need to crank on it. You're really relying on the rubber bushing. You don't want to destroy that. And at that point, turn on your water all the way. Back what? It off I found a toad! I found a toad! <gasps> you did find a little toad. Oh. Oh, careful, those tires and wheels are hot. There you go, get it! Don't be afraid! Gotta wait for it to come out. And the last thing we have is our power line. I don't like to leave it hooked up. I like to have it disconnected. Run it up through my hole. Connect it to the house. So now this has to So now that's connected. This is the panel. You have your 50, your 30, and your 15. Now we happen to have adapters for all of them, but we prefer more power. So we're gonna plug into our 50, and you turn the breaker on. Now what's going to happen in our case is the 50 amp goes to our surge guard. Our surge guard is gonna run for about two minutes. It's gonna look at this power, make sure it's safe, Make sure all the legs are talking to each other. Make sure the ground is correct. It's gonna do a ground check. And after two minutes, it'll flip on. Power will go to our transfer switch. Our transfer switch will activate. It'll go to our inverter. Our inverter will do a check. Power condition, and then it sends power to our panel. At that point, we can turn on our air conditioning, etc. And that's how we hook up. Make sure you leave your hoses all nice and coiled up. You don't want to be a snob and leave your stuff all over everywhere. And 
uh, yeah, close today. We're done. And we're ready to party. We're here in Amarillo, Texas, and we are at the Cadillac Ranch. Yeah, hold on, dude. I'll give it to you. Go shake it up. So this was an art exhibit done back in the 70s, and there's different years of Cadillac. The man explained to us that every time that Cadillac changed the tail fin of the car, okay, that they put another one in. They were originally yeah, painted a certain see, way. Daddy. They were originally painted a certain way. And then he said in about the 80s or so that they opened it up for people to uh, decorate it themselves. So here we are, the kids have picked out green and gold and we're shaking them up and we're being patient and we're gonna add our art to it. So. As you can kind of see all over the ground, there's art pretty much everywhere. People have decided to spray paint the corn. And it looks like there are a, oh, there's only a couple of them that we'll be able to get to because the rest of them are all- Muddy. There's a bunch of mud. So we'll just be able to do a couple of them. Kids, we're not gonna touch the cars because it could have wet paint, okay? Here we go. Where's the green? There's a bunch of greens. There you go, use your thumb. It's kind of hard to push, huh? Can I do this? Got two greens. This one's like a gold. Can you hold you this? want to use the black ballerine? Can you this? Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, wait, wait. You guys, I need to tell you something. Our other videos are really good. You should go watch them right now.